Getting ready to buy or sell a home? Do you want to help support pro-life organizations? Then you need Real Estate for Life. Get a top-notch real estate agent and support pro-life causes. Go to realestateforlife.org to learn more. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we have the great pleasure to celebrate this magnificent feast today, this giant of the Franciscan order, this greatest missionary of the 18th century. Who do we speak about? But the great Saint Leonard of Port Maurice. This is the Franciscan feast today. He was born Paul Jerome Casanova on December 20, 1676, in a place called Porto Maurizio in Italy, which is now called Imperia, then part of the Republic of Genoa. His father, a ship captain, was a man of great faith. Five of his six children went on to become religious. This is the holiness of the parents. When the boy who would become St. Leonard was 13, he went to study at the Roman College in Rome the city where his uncle lived. He thought of entering the medical profession at this time, but God had other plans for him, wanting him to make him not a doctor of the flesh, but a doctor of the souls. One day, he happened to visit the church connected with the Franciscan convent of St. Bonaventure in Rome on the Palatine Hill, just as the friars were chanting the night prayer, the Compline. At the words which we hear every night is the friars, the words which mean convert us, O God, our salvation, convert nos Deus, salutaris noster. The young man was converted then on the spot from his worldly aspirations to supernatural ones. Listening to God's call, he entered the reform branch of the Franciscan order the Friars Minor. He took his habit in the year 1697 and took the name of Leonard. After making his novitiate at Ponticelli, he completed his studies at the principal house of the Reform Bunch at St. Bonaventure at Palentino, again in Rome. He was ordained in the year 1703 and he remained there in Rome as a professor. He had this burning desire to be a missionary, to go to China and shed his blood for the Catholic faith, and for the salvation of souls. However, he was seized with a, a grave illness, a gastric hemorrhage, and so ill that he was sent back to his native town, Porto Maurizio, in the hope that he might recover his health. He did in recreed recover, and he gave the restoration of his health. He attributed, this is a miracle to Our Lady's intercession. And during this illness, he promised that if he was cured, then he would give his life for the conversion of sinners. He kept his promise. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, performing these missions and these preachings and these wonderful works of grace for 44 years, covering all the places in the land of Italy and the island of Corsica. At the age of 30, he began to preach in Port Maurice and its vicinity. Leonard's preaching was marked by extraordinary conversions. The power of his words, coupled with his holiness and extraordinary austere and penitential life, made a deep impression on all those who heard him and cracked the hearts of the hardened sinners. Saint Leonard would preach to many thousands in open squares in every town where he went. The churches were too small to contain the multitudes. Entire towns then flocked to hear his sermons and missions so that it was not uncommon. Can we imagine that? he would be preaching to 20, 15 or 20,000 people at the same time. Miraculous conversions followed his preaching everywhere. Saint Leonard also preached 
several times each day, heard confessions for countless hours, gave counsel and advice to those who needed, established peace between warring factions, all without neglecting his prayers, including three hours of mental prayer each day, celebrating the sacrifice of the Holy Mass with great devotion and precision, and saying the divine office on his knees. The saints stress the importance of practicing, of the practice of maintaining oneself in the presence of God at all times. He recommended people to exclaim many times throughout the day, and especially at the beginning of every action, my Jesus, my mercy. That way they can pray always, even amidst in their daily occupations, and to do everything with pure intention, looking to God alone in every action they perform. The devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary, in particular to the Immaculate Conception, he had in abundance. Also, his devotion and love of the perpetual adoration of the Blessed Sacrament, devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. These were all his daily food. And it was Saint Leonard who composed, and this is very important to remember, each time we have the Holy Hour each night, it was Saint Leonard, Port Maurice, this great and magnificent Franciscan, who then composed the words of reparation for the sin of blasphemy, the divine praises we say at the end of every benediction. Blessed be God, blessed be his holy name, etc. These words are coming from this great saint today. It was also great and magnificent, his devotion to the Stations of the Cross. Wherever he went, he promoted the Stations of the Cross, and in fact, he set up no less than 571 Stations of the Cross in his native land, in his travels in Italy. Not a mission went by without him leading the people in a pious meditation on the Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ. He preached many retreats to both religious and lay people. The theme, most of all, for his retreats was the Passion of Christ. He wrote that one of the cures for the ills of men in our society was the daily meditation of the Passion. It would bring people back in touch with reality, rearrange their priorities, and put everything into proper perspective, causing them to grow in love for Christ. And this is what we can learn today. Never let a day go by without you reflecting in your mind's eye and in your meditations the passions of our Savior. Saint Leonard's love for Our Lady led him to ardently desire and see and to do his utmost to procure the dogmatic definition of the Immaculate Conception. He called this the most important cause in the world because every other good depended on it. Peace, happiness, triumph over many heresies and triumph of the church. He urged the prelates in, to petition for this in Rome. He thus did a great part to prepare the foundation stones for the proclamation of the dogma 100 years later, we know in 1854, by Pius IX. The strains of his missionary labors and severe mortifications completely exhausted the saint's body. After his missions in Lucca and Bologna, he was stricken by favor, fever, but nevertheless journeyed back to Rome in obedience to the wishes of Pope Benedict XIV, who made him promise that he would not die in any other place but Rome. In his last days, half dead, the saint insisted on saying the Holy Mass. Though with great difficulty, for a single Mass is worth more than all the wealth of the world, he would say. On November 26, 1751, Saint Leonard arrived at his beloved monastery then, dear brothers and sisters in Christ of Saint Bonaventure in Rome, and dying in the same evening at 11 p.m. at the age of 75. Great crowds came to see and venerate his body. God glorified him in life, but still more after his death by 
numerous miracles. He was beatified by Pope Pius VI in 1796, and a Franciscan tertiary pope, Pope Pius IX, canonized him in 1867. He was magnificent, as we said, the saint of the missions in the 18th century. He also left us many marvelous writings. The most famous and the great treasure of the church is one called, and this is recounting the beauty of the sacrifice of the Holy Mass, the hidden treasure. He left sermons, letters, aesthetic and devotional writings, and he left us a great treatise which is very well known, which we haven't got time to unpack today, but perhaps sometime in the future, which was the little number of those who are saved. This is his treatise on very, very few Catholics are saved, and this is following the line of also great fathers and saints in the church. What about his devotion then? We can finish to the holy name of Jesus. He took on the baton, as it were, of Saint Bernardine of Siena. He once preached a treat at Lent and said, Oh, what a blessed place this will be. See all the houses embellished and sanctified by this most holy and sweet name, Jesus. And because I seem to see you all willing, all inflamed with love and devotion to the most holy name of Jesus, I take heart to end this preaching with that beautiful sentiment of the apostle. All whoever do you do in word or in work, do ye in all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, yes, whatever you do, do it all in honor and glory of Jesus and in the holy name of Jesus. If you leave the house, go out with Jesus, your servant. If you walk the streets, walk with Jesus, your companion. If you enter the church, you enter with Jesus, your advocate. Jesus be with you in your works. Jesus be among you in your speeches. Jesus be for you and your rest. The sun never comes out that you are not with Jesus, nor the sun goes down that you do not leave with Jesus. The name of Jesus is the first who opens your mouth in the morning, and the name of Jesus is the last that you seal it up your mouth in the evening, so that Jesus is the one who will gather your soul in his arms when you give your last breath, dying with Jesus on the eyes, with Jesus in the mouth, with Jesus in the heart. Beautiful words, no, which should be sculpted on our hearts, given to us by this great saint of today. So we ask for his intercession to live a holy life, to be close, to Jesus Christ, our Savior, the Blessed Virgin Mary, and remember and be in thanksgiving to the Holy Trinity for this great saint who has given us this great veneration of the holy way of the cross, the holy name of Jesus, the sacred heart of Jesus, and above all has given us the originator of these divine praises. So let us make this prayer in thanksgiving and pray for his intercession to have special graces coming down in these difficult times in the world we live in nowadays. Praise be the names of Jesus and Mary and Joseph now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Fide is a tech company ran by Catholics that offers alternatives to big tech without the moral compromise. 